One day I was casually scrolling through the internet watching videos on how to become a better developer. You know the struggle, you feel like an imposter, you feel like the worst developer who ever printed Hello World on the screen, and you're just trying to up your game to avoid another embarrassing PR that resulted in 19 comments from your colleagues. And while I was in the middle of all this, I stumbled upon something that I wish I just never found. Lead code. Now what is lead code and why is it the worst thing since Overwatch 2? Lead code is all about data structures and algorithms. And if you're a developer, you're actually working with these concepts, whether you realize it or not. Even if you're still saying you're not, you just are, it's just happening under the hood. Because data structures and algorithms are actually the foundation of computer science. They actually enable computers and programming languages to do what they do. So how can lead code then be the worst? I'll get to that in a minute. A better question might be, why should you learn it. Well, a lot of top tech companies use it in their interview process to test applicants. You have to understand that it's pretty tough to evaluate if someone is a good programmer. You can't exactly tell someone to build an app right now in front of you. Nobody's got time for that. Here lead code comes in. It takes data structures and algorithms and turns them into a series of problems. Like the assignments you got in high school math class, except these involve coding. In other words, it's a perfect way to test your coding and problem solving skills in a short period of time. And here's why it's the worst. Lead code is famous for being insanely challenging and difficult. Lead code is hard. This is the most academically difficult thing I've ever done in my life. So yeah, I'm totally f***. And the thing is, when I look online, I always see people showing the results of their work, not the process itself. So for example, they tell you how they mastered lead code, but they don't show you the time they spent in the mud banging their heads against their screen. So for the sake of science, I decided I needed to change that. And with that decision, a story was born. A story about a talentless software developer, an ultimate challenge, and a dog named Leonardo. You'll see. Oh, and yeah, to make this whole thing even more interesting, we're going to try to do it in only seven days. And you should definitely stay, because if you're trying to learn lead code, watching this video will save you hours of time. On day one, I kick things off with my usual strategy. Learning from others and getting Python up and running on my own computer. Oh, and by the way, aside from a single problem set I tackled one and a half years ago, I haven't written in a single line of python code <laughs> so that's just absolutely lovely and after watching the five videos i ended up adding two more for good measure it became very obvious that this is going to be seriously tough think he is 50 tough but then multiplied by a thousand so after being overwhelmed by all these new terms and scared of the problems i hadn't even started yet i knew i needed a friend <laughs> so here meet leonardo the duck such a beautiful duck if you don't know there's actually a sort of tip or trick get a rubber duck try to explain your problems to the rubber duck and that then actually helps you solve the problem so apart from a friend leonardo actually has some use in this whole journey and whole experience what's it leonardo yeah that's right i've just written one python line ever so I need to learn Python, yeah. Dude, you're supposed to be my friend on this journey. All right, got this shit. All right, so after that, I spent a lot of time analyzing the information that I had. And I came up with a pretty decent roadmap, if I say so myself. It took some time, but it made sure I had a clear vision of what to do next and kept me focused. I ended up still fucking it up, but I was genuinely happy with the concrete steps I could take. Apart from the fact that I may have a problem and a new fetish by putting all things on pen and paper, I'm doing what I learned from last video. I'm writing down all the steps. I put a lot of effort in this. What do you think, Leonardo? And to summarize it real quick, we begin with big O notation, then move on to memory and pointers, followed by getting comfortable with Python syntax. Next, we dive into core data structures, where we learn the theory, implement it, explore it in depth, and then tackle some exercises. This learn-practice, learn-practice approach, we also apply to the core algorithms, except the exercises are the actual lead code problems. They too began with me returning to my CS50 roots, where I was immediately reminded of just how great a free resource CS50 is. Just... The way they use metaphors and analogies and explain things, it's the quality of it is so high. After that, I started messing around with Python syntax, which felt relatively easy compared to other languages. And while that was reassuring, time was still ticking and I was nowhere near tackling my first lead code problem. It's taking a lot longer. 
than I expected. I'm now doing some work in Python and fuck around, but it's taking a very long time. What do you think, uh, Leonardo? Yeah, you're not helping. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, I shouldn't have throwed Leonardo. All right, that was my bad, I'm sorry. I will stop throwing you around, okay? Okay. Once I was done with the refreshing theory part, it was time to dive into data structures. And for that, I had another trick up my sleeve. This awesome book that I would highly recommend. And what made this book so great is how it visualizes data structures and uses metaphors to explain them, making all these complex concepts much easier to grasp. But by day three, I noticed that trying to juggle work and this challenge was becoming tough. With so much new information and hours staring at the screen, my productivity was starting to slow down. So I asked my good friend Leonardo for some advice. Leonardo, I've been going on for a while and I'm tired and my eyes hurt. What should I do? Bro, you're in a good mood today and that's a great idea. Thanks. No? Too early? So I took his advice. He listened to Leonardo and taking a walk outside right now. Staring these amounts of hours at a screen. Ugh. Just for my neck and also my mind, going outside really helps. And by incorporating walks and sticking with the book combined with my learn practice approach, I started checking off almost all the data structures, reaching the end of the first major part of this journey. So when on day four I finished the final data structure, my nerves and excitement shot through the roof. It's time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, guys, very satisfying moment. I did this. Yeah, this. Oh, I'm jizzing in my pants right now. This is really satisfying. Oh, that felt fantastic. I can also cross this one. And remember the plan that I was supposed to follow? Well, I just went full retard mode. I'm trying to find binary research exercises, but can't find them. Uh, I'm looking and it's just implement binary search. I guess I just moved now to recursion. Also implement that a couple of times. Binary search, it was fun implementing it. Uh, I keep forgetting to tell you guys all the details because I'm just in such a hurry and trying to do this as fast as possible. But it was pretty fun to implement binary search. Keep searching or move on. <laughs> He also says move on, so uh, yeah. So yeah, I don't know why, but I completely ignored my last step for algorithms, which was to do the actual lead code problems. I think I just thought it was way too early to start, but we gladly didn't spend days, only hours messing things up. And I realized that finally I could dump this theory stuff and start the real lead code problems. I suddenly realized that on my plan, I can start the lead code problems with easy problems. I just looked and I was like, what? I hate things in theory. I know that I need to practice and practice and practice. Yeah. Oh man, I'm nervous because I have no idea if I at least know some shit. I've solved zero. <laughs> Thanks for showing me again, lead code, but this is the first. And with that said, the happy and excitement feelings very quickly disappear. And that awful feeling came back of just staring at a screen and not having any clue on how to build something or solve the issue. And this really was a setback because it felt as if the last three days, all those hours were for absolutely nothing. Okay, um, I'm very lost. I don't know where to start, how to start. I know I need to use binary search, but I'm not sure why or where. But then suddenly I remembered this crucial advice from a video I watched at the beginning of this journey. When you're just starting out with the problems, it's important you give each problem a genuine effort. So spend at least 30 minutes to try and work things out on your own. But if you're still stuck after that, take a look at some solutions to get a sense of the approach people use and gain some context. This way you can avoid wasting hours of time and feeling stuck. In theory that approach sounded promising, but in practice I just couldn't hide my disappointment. I had to look up the solution. I I found a brute force solution that I actually understand. So, but yeah, the other solution, it uses two pointers or something. Bro, I have no 
clue what that is, what that algorithm is, why it works. I feel very stupid. I don't know why. I knew this was going to be hard, but it's kind of like a kick to your stomach, sort of. It's demotivating as well. Like I spent all this time learning data structures, learning all the shit, and now I cannot even solve the easiest problem. Better, I don't even understand the solution when it's right in front of my eyes. Leonardo, anything. Leonardo is sleeping. So despite using the reference tactic, it was still very challenging. And I could only come up with brute force solutions. However, with each problem I tried and hour that slipped by, I felt my problem solving mindset grow. Keep in mind, these were just the easy ones. And to be honest, after the first couple of problems, I did not feel like I fully grasped binary search at all. And this led me to a big decision. Should I stick with binary search longer to truly understand it? Or accept half knowing the algorithm and move on considering that time was slipping away? Leonardo what should I do? Okay. Thanks, man. You know, we started rough, but I'm really appreciating you and your guidance. So I increased the number of exercises from three to five, and then after that to seven. <laughs> and slowly but surely, on day six, I found myself actually solving a problem without looking at the solution using binary search. First I was there. <laughs> I'm getting better, just saying. Binary search, we're getting there, man, we're getting there. And after solving another problem, I finally felt like I had the real grasp on binary search. It was a huge moment and it meant I could move on to the next algorithm. But then I looked at the clock and realized how much time I had left. Oh, Leonardo, I think you might be right. I think I might have been over my head. Wow. Look at us bonding, man. Thanks, Leonardo. I appreciate it. And maybe Leonardo was right. Maybe I could pull off a final speed run and check off all the algorithms on my list. It was a small glimmer of hope, and I clung on tightly. Well, my hope got absolutely crushed by lead code once again. Okay, it's not going that great. I've been staring at this fucking Gaussian problem for the last hour. It makes me feel so stupid, man. I've been staring at the screen for like five minutes doing nothing. I wasn't even thinking. I was just, I don't know, freaking lost in the problem or something. But I just kept my nose at the grindstone and kept on moving. Using every trick in the book I had. Meaning, writing problems down on pen and paper, coffee and walks outside. Taking a stroll outside, getting some fresh air. Also relaxing my neck because my neck and shoulders killing me and yeah let's just say that this last day was a very long day this fucking problem it's bugging me <laughs> and yeah the day carried on with more coffee and my ego taking hit after hit all right we're submitting it here we go oh it's like oh man i'm not fast fucking great and after hours of trying and trying and coding and coding, I came up with this sort of new pattern that made approaching these problems not that overwhelming and doable. And I turned this framework into my sort of personal war plan. And although each problem was still a battle, I started to slowly get results more quickly. Also in the middle! <laughs> Yes. And the rest of the day was just me doing more recursion problems until I could finally check that off as well. Recursion, f me. Totally f me. I'm glad it's over. Now we would start with selection sort, but I need to see how far I can come because I still need to read up the theory again because it's such a long time ago. Yeah, I'll see how far I can come and... Uh... So I ended up going to my parents' house and I finished the theory part of selection sort. But after coding for more than 12 hours, my focus and concentration were absolutely gone. I felt like I gave it my all, put my foot on the gas. But at this point, the tank was just empty. And with that, my seven days were over. And I'm not sure how to feel about this challenge. I obviously failed at mastering lead code. I even wasted hours of time because I'm just too retarded to follow my own plan. But maybe the point of this experience wasn't about crossing off the final algorithm 
or reaching the finish line. Maybe it's a story about those of us who don't have the biggest brains, who stare at a screen for hours without any results, those who can't even follow their own made plan and feel defeated by every new question they open. But just because we're not the most talented or gifted doesn't mean we can't aim high or give it our all and try. At the end of the day, programming is all about getting comfortable with code you don't understand and also errors or things just not working and then build something to make it work again or solve the issue. And ironically enough, if there's one thing I learned in this challenge, it's being lost, overwhelmed and running into errors and then finding a way or a solution to keep the Come train on. moving. <gasps> Is it okay? Yeah! <laughs>